Hey guys, so I just got back from seeing uh, finally I, Tanya. Um, this, uh, like everything else that's getting a lot of awards consideration at the Oscars, I, uh, you know, th is one of those movies that my movie fear decided to wait until like January or February to release. Um, this seems to be a kind of recurring theme. It's not until like you know it starts get movies start getting nominations that they start releasing these films, um, and this will be the final movie before uh, I do my top ten list. So, yeah, so this was the last one I wanted to see before I did my top ten list. Uh, this was a movie that I like from the trailers. I really wanted to see. Uh, it looked hilarious. Uh, it looked like a bonkers, of, a crazy bonkers of a movie that's based off a really fucking crazy true story. Um, I remember I was alive. I was how old was I when the Tanya? I was probably six, five or six when uh, the Tanya Harding Nancy Kerrigan incident happened. If I remember it vividly, uh, like a lot of people, I remember it is, you know, uh, early 90s, I remember hearing about it, and I was like, when I heard they were making a movie about this, I was like, okay, and Margot Robbie was playing Tanya Harding, I'm like, really? Ta Margot Robbie? Really? I was like, she's, I, like, I, like a lot of people, I was like, she's probably a little too pretty to play fucking Tanya Harding. But, from the trailer, she looked like she was going to be pulling a really good performance. I uh, uh, She didn't look exactly like Tanya Harding, but, you know, as long as she gave a good performance and everything else, I, I was fine with that. Uh, they, they It looked like they were trying to make her to do what they did with Charlize Theron and Monster and make her as ugly as possible. I'm not saying Tanya Harding was a, like a hideous beast or anything. I'm just saying, you know. Like, compared to Margot Robbie. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like I said, this movie looked great. Uh, I really wanted to wait until I saw this before I did my top ten list. And, uh, yeah, I'm happy I waited. <laughs> because this... I don't know where I ranked this. It's Man, making this top ten list is going to be a fucking a really hard to do. Because this is one of the best movies of the year easily. Easily, uh, it's it's. Like I said after I did this top ten or after this movie, I was like, God damn, this top ten list is gonna be one of the hardest ones I've ever had to do, um, because a lot of the, a lot of the movies I've seen recently are gonna make it on this fucking list probably. Uh, this is a damn good movie. It's funny, dramatic, tragic as hell. This is really at the end of the, the end of the day. This is actually a kind of a tragic story, uh, even though really nobody died or you know nobody uh, sustained like horrible injuries other than Nancy Kerrigan in her leg. But I mean, she recovered from that. Uh, she, it's 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 a movie. That, like I'll say this. I said this as I was walking out of the movie. I told my mom mom as I was uh, talked to her after I saw it, it's like and I heard somebody else say this too and I agree, it's one of those movies that no matter what your opinion about Tanya Harding going into this movie this movie might change your mind about her uh, I, not, not, I remember this going on in the 90s and I remember all the stuff going on with Nancy Kerrigan and all the controversy I don't remember that, you know, I'm not, like, have the most knowledge about who Tanya Harding was. And this movie does a great job of showing her, your, you her life, the shit she's been through, the whole lot of horrible shit she's been through, and makes her character a very sympathetic character. And shows that you really don't, should not believe everything you, the media tells you about a certain person you know the media wants you portrays people as like a certain way and maybe all not always is the the ways that they portray these people are always true um it's a movie like that and goddamn margot robbie's great uh she's fucking great her 
she's this is one of those breakout performances even though she's been in a lot of goddamn big movies this is like the one movie i think everybody's gonna start noticing her or taking her a lot more serious after this fucking movie her acting chops are fucking like her acting in this movie is great especially towards the end like the heart-wrenching court scene that ooh, that acting was her acting was really good uh she's this plays you know tiny has this no nonsense uh foul very foul mouthed uh woman who just does not take any shit from anyone uh, even though it, she takes a lot of shit from her husband, Gal- uh, Galoli, and her mother, and keeps taking it over the years, uh, she is just a person, like she says, that all she ever wanted to do was be loved by people. And that, you know, she, you know, her, for her all the stuff that's happened to her in her like in her life from her a kind of abusive childhood to her abusive marriage have brought her to this point where she where she is in her, in her life and it's kind of like you know spiraled out of control it's it's a really goddamn good movie like i like her performance is fucking great um i i can tell like right right now it's gonna be between her and uh Who's it? Uh, but Francis McDormand for Best Actress. I'm kind of going more towards Francis McDormand, but if she wins, if she wins this, awesome. I, I I would not object whatsoever. Her performance is fucking great. Uh, is you know a damn. If she doesn't win yet, and she doesn't win for this. She'll win here, here eventually. Trust me, I guarantee you. She's gonna be an Oscar winner, best actress winner here in the near future. Um, God damn, I, I, I've been impressed by this girl as an actress for since like Wolf of Wall Street. I loved her in Wolf of Wall Street, and ever since I've been a big fan of hers. I even liked her as Harley Quinn, uh, even though I hated Suicide Squad. Absolutely hated Suicide Squad. By far, she was probably one of the best parts. Um, Allison Janney, uh, yeah, what's there to say that hasn't been said about this performance? Allison Janney, well, first off, Allison Janney, I've said this a million times over over the last few years. Allison Janney is one of the most underrated comedic actresses out there. She never gets enough attention, and now she is, and I'm so fucking happy. Uh, she almost every fucking movie she's in is always consistently the best character. Even if it's a shitty movie, she's always the best character. God damn it. Like, and she definitely steals the movie, especially the first half of this fucking movie. Uh, We're showing her uh, raising the young Tanya Harding, who was the little girl was that girl from the movie Gifted. I, I was like, where did I recognize her? I was like, yeah, yeah, it's a girl from Gifted. It's like, oh, that's kind of funny seeing her in this fucking movie saying f- the word fuck and everything else. It's kind of fucking hilarious. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, like Allison Janney, man. This just she is this. Probably the worst mother of the year award. <laughs> if there was one, she'd be getting it. Um, she's this her philosophy of why she was so hard on Tanya growing up was that she admits that, like, well, you know, she responds well to when people tell her that she's terrible at and that she'll never amount to anything in her life. So that's kind of her mo- motto, like why she is emotionally abusive towards Tiny throughout her whole life. And it's like, god damn. <laughs> and, and sometimes it works, like to the point she actually pays off a like a person, a heckler or, like pays a person in the audience at one of her uh, skating uh, competitions uh, to heckle her and basically say you suck, Tanya, and she like and after the guy does it, she pays him off. I thought that's pretty fucking funny. Uh, uh, she also you know she blames her for like you know always have making her go 
take her to these fucking skating competitions and go to these skating practices even when she's fucking broke and she's like he really isn't like a you think like towards the end like oh maybe they're gonna make her like a redeemable character no they don't like she's still a terrible person by the fucking end of this movie really terrible mother to the point they reveal at the end of the movie they have not spoken to each other in years I can understand why, but Alice and JD is still fucking great in this movie. Uh, this is like, everybody's talking about the parrot. The parrot, like, I wasn't paying attention to the parrot too much, but it, like, every so often the parrot would just have a mind of its own pecking at her ear. That was pretty fucking funny. Because uh, this movie is, if you don't know, is like a fake documentary being made. Like, it's like a mockumentary is being made at the same time. Or, like, they're using the actors that are playing the real-life character, the real-life people, and making it out like they're being interviewed and, in, like, for a documentary. And, uh... Yeah, like, and, like, you know, they're telling their sides of the story. At one point, at the beginning of the movie, it says, like, there are multiple accounts that don't really add up, to, like, in that are kind of conflicting with each other, but this is what they got out of it, like, from actual interviews and done with these people. It's kind, of, it's kind of funny. They actually do show, like, real footage from uh, interviews done with some of these people. Uh, Sebastian Stan, uh, if you don't know who he is, he's the guy who plays Bucky Barnes in the Captain America movies. He plays her abusive husband, and he's kind of fucking refreshing to see him like the be this kind of despicable but dumbass character like this is what i love about this movie is that somebody said i saw a review that said it's a good fellas it's good fell it's the good fellas of figure skating movies and i could see that but it it's only good fellas if you replace all the characters like the characters from Goodfellas and replace them with really fucking dumb motherfuckers that are very bad at what they're doing. Uh, because everybody in this fucking, like, that was involved in this Nancy Kerrigan incident, like, are fucking the dumbest people involved. Including, like, Sebastian Stan's character, who, like I said, he... He is her really abusive ex-husband that, uh, Glowly, uh, all everybody remembers, uh, who, you know, this, this, this was about as good of a representation of an abusive relationship, but I've seen it personally in my, in my own life, my mom and my dad, uh, this is not too fucking far-fetched, it's like, you know, Tony Harding keeps bringing, letting him come back, and pretty much, he is the downfall uh, to her in pretty much her whole career. That's the really the tragic part about it is that even at the end of the movie, he admits that he pretty much ruined her life, and it's kind of fucking depressing. Like I said, the ending of this movie is kind of depressing and funny at the same time, but really depressing if you really think about it. Uh, and like it's it is like he's really good. Like I said, I like seeing a, a different role for him. Like him doing it kind of a terrible person also a really dumbass person um one of my favorite fucking characters and this was a character that was like oh yeah this was a real person <laughs> and like i because like i said it's, it's it's been a while since this you know obviously happened in 94 so I'm like oh yeah that was a real fucking person the fucking tiny harding's uh bodyguard who's friends of uh glory if god's goddamn name and whoever they got to pick, they picked to play the guy in the movie is pretty much fucking spot on. Like it is hilarious. Like I swear to God, they got the, the they got the guy from the nineties. Like it just from in a time machine and put him in this movie. It's like he is almost spot on. Looks like the guy from in real life because they show real footage from. The, that all the characters they did a pretty good job like casting and like making the actors look like uh, the real people except like I said Margot Robbie is Tiny Harding but uh, I love it. his character is so fucking stupid oh my god like like he thinks he's like a espionage spy he's really fucking convinced that that and even like 
does an interview, I I, re- I I barely remember this, but it's like, oh yeah, that was something that did happen, and it, like he was telling the reporter that he was an espionage spy. He's like, no, you weren't. He's like, yeah, I was. No, you weren't. <laughs> I was like, I was fucking dying. I was like, this guy is such a moron, and he's the guy who plans this whole you know hit on Nancy Kerrigan, and even though like they make it out like. You know, flat out say that Tony Harding had nothing to do with the planning of this. All she wanted to do was like send a death threat, a fake death threat to Nancy Kerrigan to scare her. That was it. She didn't want to break her knee, nothing like that. But it got a little too out of hand because the people that are involved are fucking idiots. Uh, so basically, um, and they are not the most intelligent people, uh, and they basically ruin you know everybody's lives by the end of this. Um, yeah, fucking Jesus, man! And it, like this movie is fucking hilarious. It's like it's one of those movies that when you watch it, you're like, this is so far fetched, it can't have really happened. But then you sit there like, oh yeah, it did. <laughs> like this is not it, it's like as far fetched as it like seems. If you don't remember this, this really fucking happened. A lot of this shit did. I remember, like, I was like, what the fuck, man? This is one of the crazy... Like, I'm glad they made a movie out of this because it's, like, so crazy. Uh, it is a crazy story. And, like I said, there are probably stuff that is, you know, fabricated, I'm sure. But, uh, like I said, I love that they gave it, you know, put Tiny Harding's point of view and showed her point of view of what happened and showed her story, the story that... Nobody else, like nobody in the media, like they said, really wants to tell you that, and they don't really ask her what really happened. They just want to spin their own version of what happened and make her to be the bad guy. There always has to be a bad guy, and she was just it. Um, and I guess I really, by the end of this movie, you really feel bad for her. Oh my god, it's like it's so sad, man. Uh, it's so fucking sad. Like, I, I, I was almost getting teary-eyed, like, at that court scene where she... Spoiler alert, if you don't... I mean, it's something that fucking happened years ago, so, I mean, it is, I mean, it's not really a spoiler, but she, you know, loses her... She could never skate again. They, allow, they never allowed her to skate again uh, for the... You know, Olympics or you know, competition or anything like that. That's fucking horrible. That's so sad. It's like it's like that scene is really heart wrenching. And then I was like, and then they show her going into boxing, and I said, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> it's like I forgot about Ty Hardy going into boxing. I, I did she? I don't even think she did very good at it though. Uh, from the movie, that like the end of the movie didn't look like she did very good. But yeah, um, it's a really good movie. Fucking check this out, people. Uh, it's, go really go check this out. Uh, support this movie. Uh, like I said it's a little easy to make my top ten list. I don't know how. I, I don't. I don't know. If I'm, you know. I I think I know what my top my number one is. If I had to really think about it over the next couple days, that might change. Never know. Uh, but yeah, I mean this is. This top ten list is gonna be really fucking hard. <laughs> um, they'll be coming up sometime later this week. Um, as far as trailers, I only got one new one, and it was something. This movie called Gemini, and it's this looked actually pretty good. Uh, it's a movie about like this famous rapper or something like that, and her assistant, and this rapper is like receiving death threats and telling her assistant that she's always really afraid for her life and that she carries a gun with her because she's afraid of her life and then one day her assistant comes in and finds her dead uh and john cho's police officer that's investigating the murder and he white it, it, it's kind of hinting that maybe it's the assistant maybe it isn't or what's going on it's like a really good mystery look kind of good I like it actually looked pretty good like a solid like uh throwback mystery film uh uh murder, murder mystery i was like all right i'll, I'll, I'll probably be check that out if that comes to my favorite i'll probably check that out um yeah uh that's as far as trailers go i said i'll do my top 10 list and also my worst list uh, and then next, this week, we got Fifty Shades Freed. Fuck that. Not seeing that. 
Uh, Peter Rabbit, yeah, we'll see what the, how the reviews go. And uh, 15 to 17, 15, 7, the 15, 17 to Paris, which I will be seeing because it's Clint Eastwood. If you usually go see any Clint Eastwood movies. So until then, I'll talk to you guys later.